All right, good, good afternoon, everyone. Great to see some familiar faces um, at another Lunch and Learn. I think this is a really exciting one because we've got Simon Matthews, who's been on the MeshRep platform for quite a while. I can't remember when you joined, but it was quite a few months ago now. Yeah, definitely. Um, and we had a chat a few weeks about your new program, Better Buildings. Um, so he's going to take the stage today and tell us a little bit about it. Um, it's aimed at key stage two pupils and is designed as an introduction to embodied energy in building materials. But it's a really great program, really interesting. Um, and even though it's based for key stage two, I think um, we were talking about it not that long ago that you found a lot of your colleagues and several other people found it even useful to just get that basic information when you're starting from scratch. So. It's going to be informative no matter where you're coming from. But yeah, if you know anyone within the educational arena, it's something worth sharing. But that's enough of me. I'm going to pass on to Simon. He's got a great presentation. We'll have a little bit of time for some questions at the end. Um, but yeah, I'll pass over to you. OK, fantastic. Thanks very much, Cal. That's got it. OK, well, first of all, thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, talk to you all today about our Better Buildings programme. As Kat has said, um, it's designed for basically as an open source um, programme about sustainable building materials for older primary school children. So let me just initially explain a little bit about where it's where it's come from. So. We've been working and active around sustainability. Excuse me a moment, there's a fire alarm test at our own, which you might be hearing. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's gone. Right. Um, so we've been we've been looking into um, sustainable building and uh, building design for a number of decades. And just over uh, 10, 12 years ago, we published a book called Building Materials in the Environment and that was geared very much at professionals and in the last five years we've um, started to run a program for secondary schools called Architecture and Sustainability and we've engaged with a number of secondary schools but thus far we've not done anything with uh, primary schools who we very much regard uh, the children as potential architects of the future. So we decided let's try and design a program that introduces sustainability and particularly around building materials to that audience. So if I can, what I'm gonna do now is share the website with you that we've, we've produced. So certainly I think Kat, you mentioned at the beginning that um, it might be great, might be great for nine, 10 and 11 year olds, but actually in my late fifties, I'm learning loads all the time. And the first thing I learned as we were doing the research for this website is that there are, as you can see on the screen, over 6 billion buildings in the world. Bit of an estimate, but that's like an incredible number. And that's basically one for every person on the planet or thereabouts. So clearly there's a huge potential impact with with carbon emissions and i'll just give you a moment to read the introduction here that we've, um, we've sorry simon we can't see the website is still on your presentation um i think you need to ah uh, okay if you need to actually share your screen not the presentation right the okay place. bear with me a second and i will go back and share it thanks for letting me know just to show it's actually live Can you see that now? Uh, no, if you pop down and put share screen, um, you should be able to choose the right screen or just choose your Yeah, I did choose screen. the screen. Okay, let's try that now. Yeah, there we go. Better? It looks perfect. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so there's probably about 6 billion and 10 buildings now in the world during the time it took us to do that. Um, so if you just briefly read the introduction there, um, it really explains, I think, to the children why we 
uh, wanted to look into this. So we've designed this website and initially we explain why it's important to think about building materials. So we've used, we've, for example, posted up different fascinating facts. This one you can see appearing here that that number of buildings is the equivalent of building a city as big as London every seven weeks. That's how much building is going on in the world. And again, this is something like for me in my late fifties is just incredible. And you, you start to realize the potential impact we can have. So we basically then go through um, a number of key traditional building materials and I'll just click on one to show you. So for example, we take a look at brick, we explain um, to the children sort of how it's used. And we've got examples of um, different materials about uh, different uses such as for walls floors arches and even roofs we explain what's good and bad about the materials so in this case you know they can be made very easily certainly in hot parts of the world where they bricks can literally be baked in the sun um, but one of the bad aspects is although bricks are actually relatively uh, good in terms of embodied carbon, um, mortar isn't that's used to fix them together. So it's about we're, what we're aiming for is a sort of balanced view of the children understanding that not everything's good, not everything's bad. You need to think about what you're using. And then one of the key aspects of, of the website is we've introduced a carbon indicator that the teachers can use interactively as the children try and guess how much carbon there is in a particular material and then when they've had their guess they might think it's relatively high here they can click and it just slides to the right answer and some of the schools we've heard back from have, have used a sort of worksheet for the children to record that as they go through um, we've got interesting information on different materials so here's a here there's an element that explains to the children briefly what thermal mass is and how that works um, so i'm sure you all know about uh, that bricks and concrete can absorb heat during the day and then release it into the building at night so that can be quite a strong attribute to the material and so on and so forth for each of the materials so we we talk about some traditional materials and then we've introduced some alternatives and some of these um, are new to relatively new to architects but certainly new to the children and again we've been through the same process here you can see sort of glue lamb um, we've talked about definitions for example about it's important that wood comes from a sustainable forest and we've got little avatars here that explain um, what a sustainable forest is We've also got activities on different pages. So here's a chance for them to make their own glue lamb style beam using drinking straws um, to understand the concept of, of why glue lamb works. And then having talked through the different materials, they then have a chance to design their own low carbon building, at which point we get them to understand what foundations are about, thinking about walls and what uh, materials they might use to make their walls and also um, roofs and, and come back to thinking about how little embodied carbon can they design into their building. And then we share with them um, just a simple sort of schematic of how they might describe or draw their building. So you can see in this illustration here, we're showing this is a building um, which is built into the hillside to reduce the, the need for excessive foundations, which use a lot of embodied carbon, that we've got plenty of light coming into the building to make it light. Um, and basically then they're set free to design their own low carbon building. We've also got um, a grown up section on the website that um, just talks through how the website works how the different tools and so on that we've got available. And we're just in the process of adding some links to the national curriculum and some worksheets and so on. So that's the website that we produced and we, we had it all together by about February this year, which is when we launched it. Um, 
let me go back now to my presentation. So uh, can you now see the presentation, Kat? Yeah. Yeah, fantastic, thank you. So we've been out since February over the last three months, um, inviting schools to take part. And um, here's some images from uh, one of the schools that we've engaged with um, just recently down in Worcestershire. You can see examples of the worksheets that the teachers have produced and that the children have then then filled in. And they've come up with some fantastic um, observations. Um, one of the things that hadn't occurred to us, for example, was that living roofs will be particularly attractive to wildlife and, and the children were very engaged with this. So they, they use living roofs on virtually each of their buildings and so they could attract birds and, and, and so on to nest on the roofs. Uh, which was a nice, nice touch. And they've challenged us as well and said, well, you know, what other foundation materials you've suggested concrete, but that's not very sustainable. What else can you come up with? So we're now having to actually revisit the website and go, oh, OK, that's a good point. Uh, and foundations are a massive element of embodied carbon in buildings. So we need to find a way of uh, maybe suggesting wooden piles or something as an alternative. So, you know, eight year olds are now driving the industry. And on top of launching it and engaging with a number of schools and, and sort of putting it out on social media, we've had some great engagement. So we've had some really strong support from an organization called Planet Mark, who a number of you may be familiar with. We're a member at Stephen George and Partners, and they've shared it across a lot of schools that they work with, um, with some of their members. I've had the opportunity to talk to, to their network and sort of share the website on from there. And basically our view is the more schools we can get it out to, as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's, it's open source and free to use and it's designed so schools can use it without any input from us, although we're obviously on hand to help if, if needs be. Um, we were contacted then by the World Wildlife Fund who'd seen one of our posts and were quite interested in it. And initially they, were slightly disappointed that they were looking for something to fill a gap for secondary schools. Um, but having got into conversation with them, we've now helped support some of that work by sharing a little bit of our experience with better buildings alongside um, the way that we approach um, sustainability in an architect's practice as opposed to just in a sort of traditional sustainable environment, such as an environmentalist or building wind turbines. You know, we've got a part to play as well. And, but then they did put us in touch with another organization called Let's Go Zero, which is a, uh, again, a free to join and voluntary um, campaign uh, that to date over 1200 schools have signed up to say, look, we want to commit to being zero in our school by 2030, both in terms of our activities, sort of getting to school, the activities we engage in at school, but actually also looking at our school buildings and they now host our Better Buildings program on their website. So that's been fantastic both ways round uh, that we've provided a resource for them and they're now sharing it with, I think they have over 900 primary schools currently signed up to the campaign. And of course, the opportunity today that, that um, having talked to Kat about um, when we launched our website three months ago, um, we talked about the best way to share it and we've We've put, I know, some posts on, on the platform, but now there's a chance to talk to you today. So it's been absolutely fantastic. Um, the feedback from the children, as I've mentioned, has been superb. Um, there's a few um, just samples of, of some of their work that they've submitted to our website. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, they've they've come back to us. I think every single building gets designed with glue lamb and uh, living roofs, and there's barely any sort of concrete or certainly no steel in, in sight. Um, but, but one particular child in one of the schools we work with, um, when we were discussing um, how they were going to design their low carbon buildings, the, the teacher had suggested they designed a building for their actual school, but they could choose the purpose of it. Anyway, he decided that they needed a new science lab. So he designed a science lab. And when I talked to him about it as he was designing it, he explained to me that um, there was a fallen tree 
just next to the site where it was going to be used. So he was going to use wood from this tree that had just fallen down to start constructing the frame of the science lab. And I'm like, you can't get more sustainable than that. That's fantastic. So there we go. That's uh, in a nutshell, better buildings than some of the early feedback we've had.